All right, brother, what's your name? My name's Matt Kimball. Matt Kimball. I got a few questions to ask you. Um, number one is, what are you here for? I'm here to uh, promote responsibility in the government and the ways we manage American businesses, affairs with international people, so that there's increased responsibility and I don't need to feel like the use of money is promoting tyranny. Um, what do you hope to achieve? I hope to uh, rein in the uh, government and businesses' ability to go to faraway places, oppress their economies so that they can get cheaper labor, so they can sell us stuff that in turn messes up our economy and makes us all miserable. Do you think it'll work? I view the realistic potential of us waving signs around and affecting change as low. I do view our ability to network, plan, train ourselves, and harden ourselves to the reality of this coming conflict as very beneficial. That will work. I do not expect us to wave signs until they have conceded to our demands. Um, now, I've been out here as well a couple times, and I'll be out here until we get what we need. Okay. Um, but I see that they gated off this, our little area here. What's what's the deal with that? Well, apparently they have some marble restoration work, that or stone restoration work, that uh, requires we uh, not use the state property there, which... Uh, who knows if uh, this was decided when we decided to be here or if uh, that's just how things go, but I feel like these people haven't decided that they are going to oppose us, so I'm not trying to instigate a further conflict with them, so I will play ball with that. Right. Uh, what do you feel about a two-part system? Two-party? Yeah, two-party system. Oh, I, I uh, view that as a uh, trap where they mix a little of the good and a little of the bad in both parties so that there's no one correct answer and they can keep us divided perpetually, bickering amongst each other. The true strength comes from making up your own mind, forming your own positions, and sticking to them. How do you pronounce that? Cynic? Cynic. Yes, okay. Give me a little bit of a description of a cynic and do you believe we are cynics? Okay. Uh, the traditional cynics were a school of philosophical thought uh, from long ago, about 100 BC, and they um, basically evangelized criticism of the system. And in order to do so, had to take some, what we would consider difficult steps of rejecting uh, money, power, uh, even health and manners, so that they can be free to speak the truth, uh, and as they would say, uh, embrace virtue. I found myself existing within that, uh, within that, for close to a year before I'd ever heard of them. And once I read of the proud tradition of the cynics, I found myself closely aligned to them. And I believe that we are witnessing the modern rise of the cynics. Uh, they have a tendency to become more prominent as empires fall because people become entrenched and deluding themselves into thinking that what is wrong is not wrong because at the moment it benefits them in some sort of false way. The cynics have largely been, uh, uh, what they used to be insulted as dogs, it would be called the dogs. Uh, one of the most prominent ones was Diogenes, and he was literally just referred to as the dog. And he turned it around from an insult to a virtue by uh, demonstrating how the uh, dog is um, a good protector, it guards the tenant, uh, the, its location the same way we guard the tenets of our belief. They are good discerners of friend and foe, and similarly, we will know uh, allies of this philosophy, and we will 
spark away the people that would uh, hinder this progress. They have no shame, and similarly shame is uh, an outmoded concept to uh, make us play ball with their system. Um, I think we're in good shape, bud. Good. Yeah, we, we got it all. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good night. Yes, we need anything. Yeah, we got a lot of support from, from the people here. Nice. It's very uh, encouraging. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, I feel like as empires fall, cynics rise, and that's what we're witnessing today. Yeah, they do. Nice. Uh, what do you think about a unified position on issues? I think that that's a trap, and it disenfranchises people from their unique opinion by uh, trying to shoehorn them into some sort of group position. So if we have uh, any group position, I th think it should be bring your own agenda and no one is in charge. Because the moment someone's in charge, that person will almost certainly mess up the entire thing. And the moment we have a group position, we start alienating people. The moment we have a unified, say, logo or media presence is the moment somebody shows up well-funded to be our best friend until we let them use our media presence as they do something despicable on TV to make the world hate us. And that was their job, very likely. <laughs> right. right. Actually, I believe that one they interviewed a guy out here that was supposed to be homeless and he said that we have no um, no beef whatsoever and I think he was kind of a paid like could be and I think it was I read that exact quote and I thought it was funny that they are fishing around for some sort of counter position that was the best they could do and he didn't even really have anything that negative he's like they're confused or they don't know what to do and it's like well we wouldn't be here if we knew what to do. Right. You know, if we had a rational course of action to expedite the fixing of this problem, it'd be done. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, what do you think we can do to bring more people into the fold? I think we need to uh, look at um, recruitment techniques that, uh, of course, the Internet is a strong tool, but it's not the only uh tool we can use and a lot of people don't necessarily have access to it and these are very much the people we're trying to talk to. I would like to see us um, interoperate with other groups like say the Freegans who have a uh, aggressive scavenging schedule worked out where they reclaim as much food as they can from different dumpsters and industrial waste and we take that and we feed people with it and we don't use that to coerce them into listening to our position. We just feed them and leave. And eventually, some of them will say, what do you believe? And we can know then that we didn't twist their arm into joining us, that it was of their own free will, and I believe we'll have a stronger base of supporters from doing this. And it's good to feed people. Right. It's bad to throw food away. Right. So whatever we can do to further those counter or further those two initiatives, then my wife she's she's awesome she loves to cook for people she loves to feed people it's, me too yeah she enjoys it immensely um, all right. so one last question brother where do we go from here well that's a tricky one I feel we need to look at temporarily retiring our use of commerce to leverage economic pressure against the powers that we struggle against because that is almost the only thing they listen to and it's the only tool I'm prepared to embrace to make them listen to us. The other one's violence and that's a trap that'll get us nowhere. That's a, that's a, 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 a pretty big hairball there. So I'm going to spare you the long-winded answer and just say that whatever you can do to stop spending money is going to pressure them into paying attention to us. And once we have reined in the inappropriate and irresponsible actions of our businesses abroad, and we can know that we've done everything we can to make sure that the, that the products sold in America were not made by slaves, 
we can continue to purchase them and struggle to attain these things without feeling like we're promoting tyranny. Nice. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. No problem. It's my pleasure.